Hi, my name is Seth, and I'm a support engineer at NXLog. In this tutorial, I will be demonstrating file-based log compression and data at rest protection with NXLog Enterprise Edition. Often when processing logs in an organization, there may be a need to keep large amounts of logging data for extended periods on-premises. Additionally, many third-party SIMs have pricing that is often tied to the quantity or volume of logs that are being processed. This may lead some administrators to send only select logs to their third-party SIM while still needing to store all event logs elsewhere for archival, legal compliance, or other business needs for processing or review in the future. NXLog Enterprise Edition includes extension modules for both compression and encryption to aid in both decreasing log storage burdens and ensure that store data is stored more safely, commonly known as data at rest protection. I will be using a small lab environment today consisting of several emulated application servers, which will be sending simulated application-related event logs to a primary collector running NXLog Enterprise Edition. This collector will then send certain logs to a third-party SIM, or mock SIM in this case, and finally save, compress, and encrypt all logs for archival and compliance reasons locally. Initially, the collector I am using has been configured to receive TCP events in the TCP underscore rec underscore event section and will display those events in the console window for easy monitoring for this tutorial. The event is then passed to the output section to underscore sim, where I will use regex to drop any event that does not contain the string vpn-server, as only events from that host name are events I intend to be sent to the mock sim. I will now launch NXLog Enterprise Edition with my initial configuration with the dash F and dash C argument used to run NXLog in foreground mode, and with a custom configuration that I have specified initial.conf. On the right, the mock sim begins receiving VPN events as it should. I'm going to stop collecting events with NXLog now. In addition to sending logs to the mock sim, I would like to save a local copy of all events for easy review should it be needed in the future. To do this, I will create a new output section using the om underscore file module, specifying a log file with the path directive where I would like all events to be written. After making the configuration changes and restarting NXLog Enterprise Edition, I can see VPN related events are still being sent to the mock sim. I can also see that a new log file has been created and that all events are now being written to a file called events underscore backup.log. Once again, I'm going to stop collecting events with NXLog Enterprise Edition. Now that I'm saving all events locally, I have two possible concerns. The first and most important from a security perspective is that I now have a file that may contain information that should remain secured and protected even in the event of a system's breach. The second issue is that as time goes on, the number of events captured may become a burden on storage availability. To resolve these issues, log files will be compressed and encrypted, reducing the storage burden of the events, and more importantly, protecting the log data while it is at rest. Using two NXLog Enterprise Edition extension modules, I will first compress the event log file using the xm underscore zlib extension module, and then encrypt the file with the xm underscore crypto extension module. For these examples, I will be using the default settings for both the xm underscore zlib and xm underscore crypto extension modules. It is important to point out, however, that these modules have many customization directives allowing administrators to adjust security and performance related settings based on their environment and their needs. The NXLog user guide has in-depth information for both extension modules. I will add the xm underscore zlib extension section at the top of the file first, and then modify the output section named to underscore backup, adding the output type directive specifying line-based output and using the zlib extension section name zlib followed by dot compress. Now when I start collecting events, an archive will be created with the file name specified with the path directive containing a file of that name. As I start NXLog Enterprise Edition, not only can I see that events are still being sent to the sim, but I can now see that an archive has been created with the file name specified with the path directive containing a file of that name. Stopping NXLog Enterprise Edition again, if I open these archive files using standard compression tools, in this case 7-zip, and view the contents of the file inside, I can see that the events are being written and compressed correctly. I will now use the xm underscore crypto extension module to encrypt my archive file. Like before, I will be using the module's defaults for the xm underscore crypto module to encrypt the archive that is created with the xm underscore zlib extension module. A password is provided in my configuration here, 
but a password file may be used with the alternative password file directive as well. I will also modify the output type directive specifying line-based output using the zlib extension section name, zlib followed by .compress just like before, and using the xm underscore crypto extension section name followed by .aes underscore encrypt. Starting NX Log Enterprise Edition with this configuration, I now see I have an encrypted compressed archive. We can check the contents of this file and indeed see that not only is the file not recognized as an archive file, but that it has been encrypted successfully. I have now achieved all of my goals. Select events are still being sent to the mock sim, a copy of all events is being stored locally, and the locally stored log file is both compressed and encrypted, providing a lighter data storage burden and providing data at rest protection. Now that I have an encrypted archive, when needed later, I will be able to decrypt and decompress it for review. One thing to note is that there is no requirement to use the xm underscore zlib extension module or the xm underscore crypto extension module together. An event file can be compressed, encrypted, or both as needed. On that note, I will show how I can decrypt this file. Because NXLog uses open source standards such as AES, as well as several open compression standards, NXLog is not required to decrypt or decompress these files, though it can be used to do so. I will demonstrate two methods for decrypting and decompressing this newly created file using both the included NXLog processor binary with a custom configuration file, as well as with OpenSSL and 7-Zip, which are third-party utilities. Unlike standard NXLog configuration files, I will be using a configuration file intended to be used with the NXLog processor binary included with NXLog. Once again, I use the xm underscore zlib and xm underscore crypto extension modules in this configuration. In the input section, I will be using the im underscore file module to read my encrypted and compressed file. I will be specifying an input type similar to that used when writing a compressed and encrypted file but in reverse, first using the xm underscore crypto module section name, crypto, but this time with the dot aes underscore decrypt method call, and using the xm underscore zlib module section name, zlib, but this time using the dot decompress method call. Finally, using the om underscore file module, I will write my events to a file named decom underscore decrypt dot log in the output section. I will now run the NXLog processor with the dash C argument and specify the decrypt.conf configuration file. After running, I can see the file decrypted does have the events that I expected it to have. I'm now going to use OpenSSL to decrypt the same file and then 7-zip to extract the archive so that I can review the events. With OpenSSL, I will be using the ENC argument used for various encryption and decryption tasks then the dash AES256 argument for the encryption standard used, dash D argument for decrypt, dash MD SHA-256 to create the key from a passphrase, dash pass with the pass colon quotes my password to encrypt with quotes, which was the password that we encrypted the file with, to specify our password string, the dash in argument followed by the file name to be decrypted, and the dash out argument with the file name of the output file, which will be the decrypted decompressed event file name. Now that the archive has been decrypted, it can be extracted with most decompression software. Here, I am using 7-zip, but the majority of decompression utilities will be able to decompress this file. If I now open the log file, I can see my events, just as when I use the NX log processor to decrypt and decompress the encrypted file. This concludes the tutorial stored log compression and data at rest protection. If you have any questions or would like to request a trial of NXLog Enterprise Edition, you can do so online by visiting nxlog.co forward slash request dash trial or contact our presales team at presales at nxlog.org. I'd like to thank you for joining me for this tutorial. I hope it was informational and enlightening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.